welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago. This is the Word Feast. Today we are going to continue our study about the prayer of faith. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, you are the strength of our life. Father, we thank you for your strength in our life, in our family, in our ministries, in our jobs, businesses, and in our children. Father, we thank you so much for your good hand upon us for good. Father, we thank you for making a way for us. Father, you are the greater one, the most high. Nothing is impossible for you. Father, we thank you for your sustenance. Father, we thank you for supporting us. Father, we thank you for upholding us. Father, you are so good, so great, and so awesome. And Father, we pray you teach us your word today. Father, we pray that you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation in your word, your will, and your love. Father, we thank you for ideas, concepts, and insights. Father, we pray you grant us word in due season. Father, we pray you grant us answers and solutions. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. It's so good to meet you again uh, through this program and, uh, you know, uh, share and meditate in the Word together. But, um, this is a privilege, you know. Bible says that His Word brings us hope. Eh? In a world where there is no hope, where people are becoming more and more uh, afraid of the future rather than having hope for the future, we have hope, a surety about our life here on earth and in eternity. That's our God. Our God is a God of hope. Our God is a God who, um, who is alive and living and who cares for us, who answers our prayers, who wants to be deeply involved in our life. You know, having a God like that is, is awesome. Having a God like that is, is, um, is just a huge advantage in our life, isn't it? Yeah. I want to read a particular verse before we go into our study today. Go with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. And let's read verse 12. This is talking about the world and people who are outside of Jesus, right? Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, Strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. It talks about people without God, outside, not knowing God, not having hope, no covenant, no promises. That's a bad way to live. But we, oh thank God, we have Jesus, the true and the living God, whose words never pass away. Jesus said it like this, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And we have that holy word as the foundation for our life. We can stand on it. Right? We can stand on it for today and we can stand on it for our future. Eh? Knowing that God will never, never, never lie to us. And God will never forsake us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right. Now, let's go to Mark chapter 11. Let's read our text and we will continue our study. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 onwards. And Jesus answered, and Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou taken up into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Hallelujah. Let me read this from the King James Version. I like it better than that. Verse 23 from the King James Version. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And if you read uh, the contemporary versions, 
it is more clear for example in the english standard version it says this verse 24 therefore i tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours so the in these verses jesus is talking about faith and how to release our faith express our faith right jesus commands us saying have faith in god and in verse 23 it teaches us how to release our faith through our words and in verse 24 he is teaching us how to release our faith through prayer hallelujah and this verse 24 is the foundation that this is the foundation for the prayer of faith there are different types of prayer as we have discussed you know there's the prayer of faith the prayer of praise and worship and thanksgiving the prayer of consecration the prayer of casting our cares upon the lord praying in tongues hmm? there are varieties of prayer intercession prayer of agreement right we and all these prayers have uh, their own uh, benefits See, God has given us a variety of prayer, different types of prayer. And each type of prayer has a purpose and a benefit attached to it. And uh, as a Christian, I need to learn these different types of prayer. Because uh, um, each type of prayer has a purpose and it has a uh, benefit attached to it. I need to learn which type of prayer right, should be used for a particular situation. right i can't use the same kind of prayer for every situation every opportunity and every problem right it's it's like uh, you know it's like medicine right it's like a tool each medicine and each uh, uh, tool has a purpose and uh, they should be used for that purpose and if you use it you will have great benefits you can't just use the same tool to fix everything you can't just take the same medicine for every disease in the same way you can't use one particular type of prayer for every situation every opportunity every need no god has given us different types of prayer and he has, he has attached uh, various benefits for each type of prayer and we should grow in our knowledge in this area that's when you will actually become an effective prayer warrior that that's when your prayer life will begin begin to blossom and produce fruit hallelujah to jesus and in this type of in this particular series we are focusing on the prayer of faith right you know it's not that uh, one prayer type of prayer is better than other another type of prayer no it's not each type of prayer is important and each type of prayer have their own benefits and in this particular series we are focusing on the prayer of faith hallelujah so till now we have discussed a, a few things which are very important on how to pray the prayer of faith uh, let me review the first two points we began to speak about the third point last week we will continue to study that today also the first point is you have to decide what you want and be specific about that right you have to decide what you want and be specific about it we cannot be vague in our prayer in this type of prayer you know sometimes people want to fellowship with god and they talk to god about what they have in their heart what's happening in their life just to have fellowship right it's good right but um, that's not how you pay, pray the prayer of faith for praying the prayer of faith you make a decision on what you want to ask right and you be specific about what you want you write it down and then go to god and 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 uh, ask him for what you need precisely specifically right don't be vague about it and i know la- last week i mentioned this if you want a bike right tell god i want a bike what i want this kind of bike this brand of bike with this kind of um, Uh, cc right horsepower or whatever depending on what we want right whether it's car or bike or whatever right you decide that and you you mention it specifically you want a house what kind of house what size how do you want it right mention that be specific about your prayer do you want a dress 
do you want to be filled with the holy spirit or do you want freedom from sin whatever it is right decide what you want and be specific about what you want hallelujah the second point is right you need to find the will of god concerning what you are asking you should do that by going to the word of god go to the bible study the bible in the area that you are praying about and find out what god's will is before you start praying right this prayer of faith is not something that you pray vaguely or with doubt or with wavering right some people pray like you know if it is your will give me this no not in prayer of faith that's what you do when you are consecrating yourself to god but when you are praying the prayer of faith you go to the bible find out what god has said about it and then you start praying according to his promise according to his word right the great thing to do is find out the promises of god that cover whatever you are praying about if it is a financial need find the promises of god in the bible about god meeting our need if it is healing find out what the bible has promised about healing if it is deliverance from sin find out what the bible says about deliverance from sin right whatever it is god has promised whatever it is that you need find the promises of god based on which you pray right and the great thing to do is write down your prayer request also write down the promises based on which you are praying put a date put a time sign it eh it will help you to keep uh, your mind focused on what you have prayed about it will serve as a point of contact for you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus the third important thing that we uh, began to meditate on last week is calling those things that are not as if they were Okay. it's based on verse 24 look at this therefore i tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours see this is contrary to what the world teaches us the world teaches us that you uh, see first and then believe and people say seeing is believing right they say i will not believe that this is true unless i can see it i can touch it i can feel it then i will believe it that's how the world you know functions but the bible teaches that you have to believe first and if you will believe then you will see then you will experience faith comes first experience is the product of faith hallelujah hallelujah to jesus the bible says believe that you got your answer if you are praying for healing first you have to believe that you have received your healing and when you believe that you received it then the healing becomes yours you will experience the healing hallelujah hallelujah to jesus the bible calls this principle calling those things that are not as if they were right see if i tell you that there is uh, i have a you know mug here right i'm not calling those things that are not as if they were i'm calling something that is as it is if i say i have a phone in my hand right i'm calling something that is as it is right but let's say i i want a phone i'm believing god for a phone right and i don't have a phone right now i want a phone so i'm praying so i pray based on the word of god and the promises of god to meet our needs and i say father i have prayed according to your word i know that you will give me good things and i have asked you based on your promise father i thank you so much you have granted me my phone father i thank you i have received my phone right i'm saying that why am i saying i have received it because god told me so do i have the phone in my hand no but because i believe that god has given it to me god will make sure that the phone comes to me that i receive my phone faith first and then the experience right let's say you have fever and right? i'm just using some simple examples 
you believe that god has healed you you pray based on god's word ask god to heal you and then you thank god for the healing and you say father i thank you you have healed me i have received my healing right you are thanking god not because you feel healed but but because the bible says so you are not basing your faith on your feelings right you are basing your faith on the word of god right you have believed father i thank you i am healed father i thank you so much i have received my healing right you are saying that now some people think that that's a lying <laughs> brother if i say that there is uh, i have received something but i don't actually have it in my hand isn't that a lie right am i not uh, de- deceiving myself no <laughs> right see god cannot lie the bible says that right god cannot lie god told abraham when he did not have a single child that he has made him the father of many nations right when abraham did not have a single child god looked at him <laughs> and told him i have made you a father of many nations right and <laughs> abraham did not have a single child was god lying no see our god cannot lie right there is only one thing that is impossible for god do you know what that is lying our god is a god of truth he cannot lie it is impossible for god to lie and god said i have made you a father of many nations when the man didn't have a single child right that principle is called that principle is called calling those things that are not as if they were he was not a father of many nation but god called him so and because god called him so he became the father of many nations right so this is how god functions i gave you a couple of examples last week right one we spoke about abraham and the other was about uh, joshua and jericho right god looked at joshua and said uh, i have given you this land right i have given you jericho into your hands and its king and its mighty men of valor meanwhile the wall of jericho is still standing the king is still inside the city the the mighty men of valor are still inside the city they have not fought the battle yet they haven't started the, the children of israel haven't started going around the city for one week yet hmm they have not and yet god said i have given you i have given you right <laughs> he didn't say i will give you the city now he said i have given the city is god lying <laughs> no he is not this is what the bible calls calling those things that are not as if they were this is walking by faith say walking by faith not by sight but by faith faith in what my imagination no faith in god's word see if i am imagining that i am healed by myself not uh, then that would be just fantasy right let's let's just say i am imagining that uh, the city that i live in is mine right and i am the ruler of this city i am sitting on a throne and i am ruling over the city that's not based on god's word that's just me wanting something dreaming it or dreaming about it imagining it fantasizing it right and that no matter how many times i say that it's not going to come to pass right but this is the bible and when i say something based on the bible based on what god has promised me it will come to pass see abraham did not sit around and just say i am the father of many nations no abraham wanted only one son <laughs> he wanted one son to whom he can leave all that he has he wanted a heir right he didn't want his line to end with him he wanted a child 
Right? One son, that's all he wanted. Yeah. It was God who said, I have made you a father of many nations. Do you understand this? Hallelujah. So when God is saying something, and if you believe what God is saying, it is not fantasy. It is not a lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at this. Go with me to Genesis 15. Yet God is making a covenant between uh, himself and Abraham. Right? If you look at that, Genesis chapter 15 and verse 18 onwards. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, and then he lists the various uh, nations, right, to whom that uh, land belongs. So, um, God, look at how God is phrasing this statement. He didn't say, to your offspring, I will give this land hundreds of years later. That's not what God said. What did God say? He said, I give this land, meaning I'm giving it now, at this moment. I give this land to you and your offspring. Now when God, as soon as God said this, did all the children of uh, the various nations vacate the land and go away? And, to, and, and uh, no, did they come to Abraham and say, listen Abraham, we are all leaving. This city belongs to you. Right? All the walls, all the cities, all the houses, they are all yours. We are leaving. Occupy the land. Is that what happened? No. <laughs> See, when God said this, the nations were still there. After this, this was around, you know, Abraham was around 75 years at this point of time. Roughly around that. It was another 20 years before Abraham had his first son, Isaac. You know, I'm talking about the sons of promise, not Ishmael. Right? Um, the first son who was born through the promise was Isaac. Right? So, <laughs> it was 25 years after this, before Isaac was born. And all his life, Abraham just saw three people who were born through the promise. Isaac and then Jacob and Esau. Okay? He didn't see it with his eyes when Israel came out from Egypt and occupied the land of, uh, you know, the land of Canaan. Right? It was hundreds of years later. But notice how God is saying, I, ha I give this land to you. I give this land to you. And Abraham believed it. Abraham believed that the land is his. Abraham believed it. Isaac believed it. Jacob believed it. They all believed up with absolute certainty that the land of Canaan belongs to them. Belongs to them. Look at how Isaac is speaking about uh, the land of Canaan. Go with me to Genesis 28. You know, here uh, Isaac is actually blessing Jacob, right? Before he went to Padan Aram to uh, take a wife for himself from Laban's daughters, right? So, while he is going, look at what uh, how Isaac is blessing Jacob. Uh, Genesis 28 verse 4. May he give the blessing of Abraham to you and to your offspring with you, that you may take possession of the land of your sojournings, that God gave to Abraham. Notice they are saying God already gave it to Abraham. They are not saying God will give it to Abraham. They are saying God gave it to Abraham. Right? What did God give Abraham in Genesis 15? He gave a promise. He told him, I give this land to you. Did the family of Abraham occupy the entire land of the promise? Were they occupying the entire land of promise? No. Right? They were just one family at this point of time. But notice how Isaac is speaking. He is saying God has given it to Abraham already. Right? He is saying God gave to Abraham. In the past tense, have they started enjoying the entire land as their own at this point of time? No. No. Right? The centuries later when Israel actually took possession of the land. Right? But notice how Isaac is speaking. Right? God gave to Abraham. 
you have to understand when god promises you something he has already given it to you as far as god is concerned it's done it's yours it has been given to you do you understand this hallelujah hallelujah to jesus that's why you can say boldly god heard my prayer god answered my prayer father i thank you i believe it father i thank you i received it how did abraham receive the land hmm? was there a formal transaction did god go and document um, <laughs> right the transaction no it was a covenant it was a promise right and abraham trusted that god has given it to him based on what he said do you see why the you no know, studying the word of god is, is a very important part of the prayer of faith that's why i said first of all before you start praying go and find the promise the promise that covers your situation if god has said it that means your 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 prayer is will definitely be answered because god does not lie god does not change his word hmm hallelujah hallelujah to jesus notice this okay let's go to genesis 50 in genesis 50 here joseph is talking to the children of israel just before his death um so look at what he has to say verse 24 and joseph said to his brothers i am about to die but god will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to abraham to isaac and to jacob now this this is a long time after god actually spoke to abraham isaac lived 185 years jacob lived 142 years joseph lived 110 years and if you combine and do all this um, arithmetic is at least you know this is at least after 200 or more years after god had originally spoken the promise you understand this and yet they are absolutely certain that god will do what he said god will perform what he has said they are absolutely certain about they are not wavering they are not saying oh if it is god's will he will give us the land no they are not saying that they are not going around saying if if god is pleased he will give me this land no they are not saying maybe god will give maybe god won't give no they are not saying it i want you to notice this look at how certain they are how absolutely persuaded they are eh nobody is is worrying or thinking maybe maybe not no when each one of the descendants of abraham speaks about that promise they are absolutely sure they are fully persuaded they are certain that the land belongs to them god has promised god gave us the word so that land belongs to us god gave it to us it will come to pass nobody is wavering look at jacob go with me to genesis 48 here jacob is blessing his children and he is talking about talking with joseph about uh, his children right manasseh and ephraim notice verse 4 um, onwards let's read this this is uh, jacob speaking about the promise god gave him let's read from verse 3 And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and blessed me and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make you of a company of peoples, and will give this land to you, your offspring after you, for an everlasting possession. And now your two sons who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh shall Manasseh shall be mine as Reuben and Simeon are. Notice this: the children that you fathered after them shall be yours. They shall be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. Yeah. Notice how um, Jacob is uh, speaking about the land, right? He is saying that these two children are his heirs. in what in what is he saying that these two children are heirs concerning the land that was promised to abraham they still who don't have the land in their hand their their family is still not occupying the land do you see this yet jacob is speaking as if the property is already in his hand 
So if you are going to leave a property to your children, how would you leave it? Will you leave a property that is not yours? Let's say you want to leave a house for your children. You won't leave an imaginary house to your children, right? Something that is not there which you can see and something that is not documented, right? You can leave a, a, a house to your child which is documented in your name. Only then it will be valid, right? If I'm going to leave a house for my children, I can only leave what is what belongs to me and what is legally mine and documented properly and recognized by the government. Only that I can leave to my sons, right? That's the way Jacob is talking about a land that God promised. They are they have not occupied the entire land yet. It doesn't it is not in their hand yet. Jacob is speaking this based on what God promised. Based on what God said. He is talking about the promise as if he already has it. And it belongs to him. And he can give the promise to whoever he wants. Do you see the faith of these people? That's how they thought. That's how they spoke. They were utterly sure about what they were speaking. Totally convinced. Absolutely convinced. Are these people lying? Notice Joseph did not say, what land are you talking about? Where is this land? Do you have the land in your hand? Give me the property documents. Show me that you actually have a land. Notice Joseph did not say that. <laughs> Neither did Ephraim or Manasseh. When, when, Jacob, when Isaac spoke over Jacob, Jacob didn't say, what land? Where is the property document? No, no, somebody else is staying there. The some, some other nations are there. You are saying that that nation is mine? How did God give to Abraham? What is the proof? I don't see the proof. I can't feel the proof. Nations are there. Kings are there. Mighty men are there. But you are saying God gave it to me. How did God give to me? Notice none of them said that. They all accepted those words with absolute certainty. All of them. Why? They all understood how God operates. When God says something, it's as good as yours. In fact, it is yours, not as good, it is yours. Hmm? When God said, I give this land, the moment he said it, that land became Abraham's. He was the rightful owner as far as God is concerned. Right? And as far as Isaac was concerned, that land belongs to him. Even though other people are living in that, other nations are living in those lands, as far as Isaac was concerned, that land belonged to him. As far as Jacob is concerned, that land belonged to him. As far as uh, Joseph is concerned, that land belonged to him. None of them asked God, show me evidence. None of them went visiting that land and to see if all those nations vacated this place. All those need to see if, if, if there is any change in the number of people living there. Right? He didn't conduct opinion poll. What do you think about it? God told us that this land belongs to us. Do you believe that this land belongs to us? Are you willing to give this land to yours? They didn't conduct an opinion poll. No. They believed it because God said it. As far as they are concerned, God said it. They believed it. And that was the end of the matter. Do you understand this? When we pray, that's how we should be. We should not go looking for outward evidence to see if we are healed. Right? We shouldn't you know, touch, feel, check our body to see if we are healed. God told me I am healed, therefore I am healed. Right? If God said I am healed, I believe it. God said you were healed by his stripes. I am healed by the stripes of the Lord Jesus. God said believe that you receive it and you shall have it. I believe I got my healing. And therefore I will be healed. Do you understand that? Many people to check to what the mistake that they make is. After they pray they check to see if there are any symptoms. And if there are still any symptoms they think okay God has not answered my prayer yet. God has not given me an answer yet. So, I don't know if God has heard me. Right? Let me give you a couple of practical examples. See, I remember there is this testimony about this man of God. Right? He had high BP. Right? Terrible high BP. Really high. 
and uh, so he he and uh, another servant of god they joined together and they prayed the prayer of faith they agreed and uh, believed god for the healing of this particular servant of god they both of them agreed and believed that god has healed him they believed that god heard their prayer and answered their prayer and this man was absolutely certain god healed me see after he prayed the bp went up even higher <laughs> right <laughs> what happened after they prayed the prayer of faith um, the bp actually went up higher he suffered for a couple of weeks but you know what this man did he said this go with me to matthew chapter 18 matthew chapter 18 verse 19 again i say to you if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven right he he stood on this word he said i have agreed and prayed that i am healed therefore i am healed god has said if two of you agree on earth it will be done for them i asked the father he healed me i am healed right he he stood on this verse first day no change second day no change third day the bp problem disappeared do you understand this right if if you was like many christians right <laughs> and checked on his bp right after praying you would have gone to her house check the bp or oh, the bp is still high maybe god has not heard my prayer maybe god didn't hear me maybe god does not want to heal me that would be the end of his prayer see but his faith was not like that see his prayer was based on god's holy written word god's promise right and based on god's promise he said i have prayed according to the word of god and according to the word of god her god heard me and god answered my prayer i have received my healing i am healed he stood on the word of god boldly declaring that he is healed eh uh-huh. and as a result of that he became healed and he enjoyed his healing the healing became his experience do you understand that many times in my life i have faced the same thing you know uh, just uh, some time back i i broke my left arm right my elbow was shattered i had three fractures one in my elbow and another here and another in my wrist in three different places now based on the word of god i prayed that god has healed me right and i started thanking god that i am healed i couldn't move my hand <laughs> right the first day i i kept my hand like this and i kept sleeping i couldn't move my hand if i move my hand pain would just run through my body right i just had to keep my hand i couldn't move my hand even a little bit right but i know because i prayed according to god's word god heard my prayer god answered my prayer and god healed me the first time i prayed So what did I do? I just kept thanking God, Father, I thank you, you healed me. Father, I thank you, you healed my bones. Father, I thank you, you restored my bones. I'm healed. I'm healed. Why? Did I feel that I was healed? No. <laughs> I didn't have any feeling that I was healed. I still couldn't move my hand. I I could still feel the pain. Right? But I didn't sit around thinking, "Oh, maybe God did not hear me yet." maybe god did not answer me maybe it is not god's will to heal me no 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 i believed with all my heart that god heard me god answered my prayer and god healed me did you understand that second day little bit of movement third day more movement fourth day the thing was gone do you understand this first faith then the experience first you have to believe that god heard you and god answered you and that you have received your answer then you will experience the answer understand this hmm? this is the most important part in the prayer of faith first you have to believe that god gave your answer you have to believe that god, you have received your answer when you believe that you will enjoy the answer you will experience the answer remember this faith comes first 
and the experience is the result of your faith right faith comes first you have to first believe that you have received it when you believe that you will experience the answer you will enjoy the answer hallelujah hallelujah to jesus if you need money even though you don't have the money in your hands yet because you prayed you should believe that god you heard your prayer god answered your prayer and god has given the money into your hands you believe that first father i thank you that you have met my need father i thank you heard my prayer father i thank you i got my money when you believe that you got your money money will come to you right do you understand that you believe you got your money based on what based on his word god does not lie god does not change his mind god has said believe that you have received your answer you prayed for god to meet your need then you say father i thank you that you have met my need father i thank you you have given me the money and when you believe that money will come to you it's the same for every area whether it is deliverance also right if you are struggling with the addiction or with the habit based on god's promises you pray that god deliver me from this uh, habit this sin right and you believe that god has delivered you from the sin and because you believe god has delivered you God, deliverance will become your experience deliverance will happen hallelujah hallelujah to jesus we will talk more about this in the coming week let me pray for you hallelujah father we come to you in the name of our lord jesus father we thank you so much you are our healer father you are our deliverer father you are our shepherd our el shaddai father nothing is impossible for you father your word is truth you do not lie you do not change your mind father we come to you based on your holy written word father you said i will restore health to you father you said the lord will take away all sickness from the midst of you father you said in your word i will bring health and cure and father based on your word we are praying right now that you heal everyone who is listening to my voice heal them totally and completely from every sickness every disease from the top of the head to the soles of their feet whatever they are facing whatever sickness or disease let it depart from them in the name of jesus sickness and disease i command you to leave their bodies in the name of jesus let them be filled with strength let them be filled with the life of god hallelujah hallelujah to jesus father we thank you so much that you heal them and father i pray for those in need and those who have desires that they they want they need and they desire it but you know they don't have it yet they don't have the money yet father you are our provider you are our shepherd father we pray that you meet the need of those people meet all their needs help them in their finances father let every bill be paid let every payment be done let all the loans be removed and cancelled and totally annulled father we pray that they will have abundance too much and excess father we thank you so much for your mighty help for them in their finances father you are good and your mercy endures forever hallelujah Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus. We pray. Amen. You know, I encourage you to listen to our messages every week, every Wednesday. We are publishing a word feast video messages in Tamil and English separately. Listen to the messages every Wednesday. It will bless you throughout the week. We are publishing audio messages. Listen to them. They will bless you immensely. you know we teach the word of god we don't teach our opinions or our personal ideas right and the word of god will bless you the word of god will build you up the word of god will equip you to inherit the blessing hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right now uh, please to share the video messages and the audio messages with your friends family relatives coworkers neighbors people who need the word people who love the word share it with them god will bless you 
yeah and uh, please do send us your prayer requests and uh, you know to our email address you will see it at the bottom of the screen or you can send it to our whatsapp number you will see that at the bottom of the screen and we will believe god along with you god will do mighty things for you and uh, do send your um, testimonies of how god is working in your life through this ministry we love to hear from you and you know god will do my you know god will honor you when you, when you declare what god has done for you publicly God will honor you. Yeah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And um, please do send us um, the offerings to our, um, through our website. Right? If you want to send offerings to, uh, to this ministry, go to our website gwfindia.in and click on the donate tab on the top and uh, you will have a variety of options to send in the offerings. You can choose whatever is comfortable for you and uh, God will bless you. God will honor you. You know, when you sow into the ministry, you are sowing into the kingdom of God. And God will bless you abundantly for that. God will give you a hundredfold harvest. And God will fill up your storehouses. And God will increase you and multiply you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon. <laughs>